And welcome to this webinar about the art of facilitating business constellations. Um, yeah, the goal for today for me is to share how I look at constellation work, how I look at constellation work in a business context, and, um, and also share what I think as a facilitator, what you should do, not do, or what, what, is, what makes a good facilitator. And at the same time, it's also a place to ask, to, to ask questions, to have a conversation about whatever topic. So feel free to open your mic whenever you are you have a question because we're with a small group. Uh, you can also put it in the chat if you prefer that. Um, so a little bit about myself. Some people have known, known me already. I was born in 1970. My father, my mother, and me as a little kid. Then I went to the University of Groningen, and there I studied management and organization. So that's where my my love for business is and and and, and working together to create something beautiful uh, started. I worked for IBM, so I have worked in a big company. Well, and it wasn't really a, a good fit for me. So after three years, I I started working for uh, Syntense, which is a consultancy firm for the uh, small and medium enterprises. So that's where I learned how to work with entrepreneurs, how to learn work with innovation. Um, in the meantime, I got married, two children. They are now almost 23 and 21. Um, and then in 2007, somebody gave me a little push and then I said, okay, okay, I'll start my own company. Um, and first it was Naima Coaching, which is my last name. And later it became Intuitive Ondernemer, which is Dutch for intuitive enterprise or intuitive entrepreneurship. And then in 2016, I also started my international uh, branch of my, um, my business. And in that business, I combined the business knowledge, marketing processes, organizational structure, entrepreneurship with more esoteric spiritual uh, aspects like the psychology, um, shamanism, holism, um, non-dualism, and constellation work. In 2018, I, um, or let me, let me first, I also wrote two books or one book and translated into English, The Effortless Entrepreneur, in which I combine all this knowledge and experience into, yeah, how can you do business in a way that makes it easier? I always like to, things to be easy. And if you use the undercurrent, and that's also what constellation work does, um, you can become much more successful in all ways, not only like a lot of money, but also good relationships, contributing to the world. So that's what I really like to do. So in 2008, I was t uh, taught by Nienke Binkhorst, who, who combined already like the more intuitive approach um, and constellation work shamanism um jan jacob stam a very famous guy so i followed a lot of uh, these trainers to broaden also my my skills and my view on constellation work so during my trainings people ask oh is it a, can i do this or can i do that and i said yeah you can do everything because i've seen different people doing different ways of constellations and i think almost everything is possible so um, yeah, and then it's, it's, it's a very big mix. And when you, you follow one of my trainings, you will also find that I include all these different approaches and different knowledge in, into my trainings. Um, yeah, in 2017, I think I started doing this work. In, or in 2014, I started teaching people in the Netherlands. And then in 2017, I went to Bucharest, Budapest, uh, online, I uh, and now also in Dubai, I've been to Paris. So, and overall, what I would like to do is have people work in a different way. Actually, I could say work from love in the business, consciousness of unity and wholeness, creating success and aligning businesses with the needs of people and the planet. And profit as a result. It never, and I always see that with entrepreneurs, profit is not their main goal. The main goal is to contribute something, to create something, to do something fun. And um, 
then of course we need to make profit. We need to also have money. Um, well, you already know quite a lot about constellation work, but for me, it's interesting, and that's what Jan Jakob Stam taught me, is that, that Bert Helling actually did two things. He brought us the constellations, which work with wraps, which work with uh, spatial information, with the field. And from these constellations, he and others derived the systemic approach, the systemic theory. Uh, and that's about the three life-giving forces. Systems want to be complete. They want to include everybody. Uh, systems um, um, exchange with their environment and there is a natural order in systems. Um, and there are the three consciences, the unit conscience saying, okay, how do I belong to the system? Then the system conscience, which makes sure that uh, everybody is included, that uh, the history is included and the, uh, you, you know, the, the evolutionary conscience, making sure that yeah, it's, whole systems are destroyed and or are created so it's 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 a very large force in the in the in, in the universe actually and the fact that every problem we we see in this at the surface is actually a solution of the system and mostly the system conscious conscience of um how do i include everything it's a very quick overview because well, mainly I want to focus on the art of, of, of facilitating and not on what is systemic approach and what is systemic work. There are some very good books about this. If you want to read more about it, please send me an email and I can I can recommend some very good books on, on this systemic approach. Um, but it's also good to realize that you can do the systemic approach without constellation work. You can have systemic coaching, systemic consulting, systemic whatever. Um, and it just means that you're looking at the, at the business in a certain way. And you can do constellation work without a systemic approach. You can use representatives, you can have spatial information, you can have people move and give information without uh, taking into account the order, taking into account to include everything. Mostly it is combined, but um, you can even do it separately. And in my trainings, we focus a lot on the constellation work but also on the systemic approach and the systemic knowledge. Oh, I did have some explanation about that. So it's, 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 I like this, this image. It's, if you see that, it, Anita Schelling created this. So there's the unit conscience, um, which, which knows how to belong to a system. And this is about loyalty and also about guilt and innocence. Because if you do things that, to, that, that are allowed or are good to belong to the system, you feel innocent and you feel comfortable and loyal to the system. Um, but sometimes you want to do things differently. Uh, and it could be different from your family system, but also differently from your business system or different from the, 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 the previous business. Um, like if you have a merger, for example, then there's, there are all these inner conflicts in people, okay, what do we do need to do now in order to belong here? Well, these are the three, um, the three forces, so wholeness, systems want to be complete, they don't want to exclude anybody or anything from the history. There's a natural order in systems, family systems is a very clear order, it's the generations, you have children, parents, grandparents, great grandparents. Um, and there's age in a, in a family system. In a business system, it's a little bit different. There are also, also age. You also have a hierarchy. But there you also have seniority. How long have you been with the company or with this team? Uh, there's also an order in functions. Some functions uh, come first and then some functions come second. And there is exchange. Every system exchanges with its environment. And um, this needs to be balanced or it's always imbalanced because that's how it works. It's like it's a moving balance, but overall it needs to be balanced. And if you give too much or take too much, um, well, we'll get dynamics, patterns, entanglements, which create problems on the surface. So, and whenever you see problems in organizations uh, or in systems in general, um, you might want to look at, okay, so, are these three forces? Is there something 
going on there? Or is there something with loyalty, with guilt and innocence? And then we have the evolutionary conscience or Geist in German, spirit, mind in English. And that's interesting because this creates just, well, COVID was a very good example. In March 2020 or February 2020, we had all had a, a planned future. We had all kinds of ideas of what to do and how to create something. And then suddenly there, there was this emerging future. It was like, wow, there's this virus and everything is in lockdown and we cannot do anything anymore. So, um, and it's this, this tension between the planned future and emerging future, which makes business is also quite interesting to, to work on these two aspects, to also realize that there is something larger at work that, um, that, that is influencing the businesses. In my book, uh, I, I call it surrendering. It's also surrendering to something larger than yourself. So this is actually the, the basis of the systemic approach. <clears throat> if there are any questions, please let me know. No questions, okay. Then a constellation. So we have the systemic approach and we have the constellation. The, the basic way of doing a constellation is that we do the what we call the interview. So you have like a, a short conversation. What is the question? What do you want to look at? What is, what is it that you come across in your business or well, specifically for business constellations? Um, and actually, the only thing you want to know is what is the question and, and, and what are the elements that we're going to look at? What kind of stakeholders um, or yeah, what, 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 who or what plays a role here? Then we're going to choose the representative. So we choose people or well, in different, you can have like tabletop figurines, floor markers um, to represent the different stakeholders. And as you hear, I use the word stakeholders. So that's also for businesses. It's easier to understand, um, except that we also can bring in a building or we can bring in the planet. So, but well, in a way they're also stakeholders. So I sometimes use different wordings than with family constellation. We place the reps in, in the room or on the table. We, we make a spatial representation of how we or the client sees um, the issue. And actually then what we do, and it should be number four, I see, uh, we observe what is shown in the field. So what, what is happening? So you ask the reps, what are they experiencing? What are they sensing? They follow their inner movement. And then you ask again. And actually by doing this three, four times, you get a lot of information. Sometimes you can even stop the constellation already. But we also could do some systemic interventions. Um, and there are different interventions, but not even very many. In the training, we'll focus on what and what interventions do we have and how can we use them. And then you finish up. So it's very interesting because I always say, okay, well, this is how we do constellation. So now you can do a constellation because you just has, have to follow these six steps. Um, but of course, and I'll, I'll explain a little bit more how I look at that. There, there is more to it than than just following these steps. But it's also good and well, that's also what I like in, in to do in a trading is make it a little bit simple and uh, and like a process. And at the same time, of course, it's not a process. It's a very dynamic dance. Um, but sometimes it's good to realize, oh, okay, so. I can just ask the people, what are you experiencing? Or I can ask, follow your inner movement. Or I can say, I can do a systemic intervention. So it helps you to make it a little bit more um, structured. Um, so the, the constellation work has really developed a lot. And that's also what I really liked about Bert Hellinger, but also Jan Jakob Stam, because I heard that Bert Hellinger told Jan Jakob Stam, why don't you create like a quality management system or a quality insurance system for the for the constellation world and uh, Jan Jakob Stam said no I'm not going to do that 
because if I do that, I place myself in a position of God or of some know-it-all and, and I just want the field to, to develop itself. And that's why there's no certification. There's no good or bad. There's no um, well, people that are allowed to do it or not allowed to do it. There are no levels. And at the same time, there are, of course, people that some, there are facilitators that some people would say, oh, that's not very good or that's not the way I would do it. Um, but I have learned because I've seen many, many, many facilitators um, and also some that I thought, wow, how can you do this? But then when I was looking, I thought, okay, I wouldn't do it that way. I would even consider it wrong, but the result is very good. And the client is happy and I see and sense that there's really something happening here. So I have learned not to judge the way that people facilitate. There are some standards that I would say, well, there's, for example, one thing I heard from people that some facilitators, they continue even if the client doesn't want to anymore. And for me, that's, that's, that's a no-go. But other than that, well, it's it's an interesting thing, and that's also what we're going to explore during the during the training. Is how do you know that you're doing the good thing? How do you know uh, that you're facilitating in a way that is supporting the client or supporting the client system, and not coming from your ego or your system? Because that's 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 important. So the current playing field is that that. It has moved from the family constellation and the therapeutic world into organization, career, illnesses, relationships, teams, marketing, strategy, whatever. You can even do a constellation to create the processes in an organization to decide upon the packaging. Um, I've done a constellation with buildings. So how, what building do we need to renovate first? It's very interesting to, and that's also one of the things that I, I really like is to uh, play with the, with with constellations and to really explore what 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 is all possible here. There are many types of constellations. You can do the traditional one in a group where you have a question owner and and people become representatives, but you can also do it one on one with tabletop figurines, floor markers. You can do it in a visualization. You can do it in drawings. You can easily do it online. I I already did that before COVID, but now after COVID, I do it also a lot. Even in groups, you can do it online. And there are many ways of facilitating. The more directive ones, the, 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 yeah, they call it the old way of facilitating, where you say, okay, now you step up, stand over here, you move over there, you bow, you say this, you say that. Um, there are certain fixed interventions. Whenever there's this issue, you do step one, two, three to fix the issue. You have people that work in silence, no talking at all. You have people that work with fixed formats. So we have the fixed number of uh, representatives. They are in a fixed position. Um, and we have a very intuitive approach, intuitive following the field, being silent when silent, and sometimes also uh, expressing words or what we call healing sentences. Um, I'm more the intuitive guy. And at the same time, I also work with, fix, with, with a fixed format. Sometimes I'm a bit directive. So... Um, yeah, I, I I have a different mix of uh, facilitating, but mostly I like the intuitive approach. Any questions about this, about the playing field, about the um, steps in the constellation? No? Uh, Martin, maybe uh, just one question. Uh, if it, you cover it later, it's uh, it's fine. Yeah. So when you because field yes, yeah, so the uh, space where you organize constellations, you mentioned that you also use uh, alternative uh, sciences, yes, yeah, shamanism and uh, other stuff. Mm -hmm. So do you uh, support the field with any um, energy space, energy flow? or it is just following the steps because i just noticed that because uh, i'm from russia and in russia uh, most of constellations are supported and connected yeah to representatives uh in a stronger way yeah in the netherlands i saw different approaches as you said and sometimes it is more technical 
Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so that's why, yeah, I, I see I see you understood the question. Yeah. It's a, it's a good question because there's there's you can make it very technical, uh, but I like also to really incorporate this energy layer, this more intuitive layer. So when I work with constellations, I do have a little ritual to to prepare the space. Um, but this can be very energetic, but also just moving the chairs. I always take some time to get the chairs right, but it's more like I just walk in the field and I already create something. Then with the group, when the group is there, I also take a moment to connect to most of the time what I do. It's a very powerful exercise is that I let people walk around and then look each other in the eye. Um, let me stop that. So I have people look each other in the eye and then um, just breathe three times. So it's a very powerful way of connecting and letting go of all the masks and, and, and layers that are there, um, which helps later on to have a constellation where people are really connected with their bodies, connecting with the field. So yes, I agree that, that it's good to do some work in creating a, a space where more things can happen than if you just have these five steps and we do the, the technical constellation yeah okay thank you okay also welcome charu if you have any questions i you can just open your mic and ask sure sure i will okay good thank you okay so some of you are already familiar with family constellations um and some people say there are only family constellations. <laughs> I don't agree. And at the same time, a lot of constellations in the business context go back to the family system because we all bring our family systems into the business. Um, but there are, all, are also really business constellations or business focused constellations. And there is a difference between the two. Uh, here you have a list. Um, so, for example, business constellations I often use also as a tool. So not like, yeah, it's a ritual and it's it's like a, um, well, a, a deepening, deep process. But at the same time, you can then use it like, okay, what did we see in the constellation? What did we sense? What kind of input did we get? And how we're going to translate that into our daily work or how... Um, Maybe after some conversation, we say, okay, now we want to try out two different options and we do a constellation with the two options. So we also use it as a, as a way of exploring different strategies, for example. Um, it is often also more complex because we don't really know, there, there are so many systems involved. There are the family systems involved, the systems of the teams involved, systems of the country, the the industry, the products. So um, it is more, well, I find it sometimes more difficult to tune in like, okay, what systems do we need to look at? Whereas with family systems, it's like, okay, there's the family. So <laughs> I did a two, four day training with, with this guy and he said almost all constellations, he just said, he put the father, the mother, a representative for the fate of the mother and the fate of the father. And that would solve a lot of issues already. So just these four elements and then the client, of course. Um, so it, it's it's quite clear where in businesses it's, it's more complex. Um, yeah, and that's also why the interview can be a little bit longer. Um, but also depending on the question, but sometimes you really need to, to know, get some information from the clients. Okay, when was it founded, this company? How is it structured? Who owns what? Um, so it's kind of business technical information that helps you to uh, understand, but also to intervene in the right way. So why should you use business constellations? Well, yeah, again, it's quick and deep at the same time. So it's in a in a very short time you get a lot of insights mm. that go very deep. And and some people don't well they don't look at it this way, but I really sense and see that when we do a constellation, we do get the information which you can use, but it already starts a movement. So 
people are are set into motion the the business is set into motion the system is changed already so even without doing anything the world is differently different after the constellation it's an embodied experience so in, instead of people just asking to talk and to to listen to their heads you really help them to go to their bodies and to um to use that in 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 business decisions and it always opens new doors um which is not always fun because they are can also, could also be painful doors but it's it's it when you get stuck in a business and you don't have any uh, inspiration anymore you don't know where to find a solution business constellations always find a new way or a new approach or a new uh, solution path mm. it also creates a new way of communicating because if we um, yeah what i do with, when i work with teams or with organizations i um i ask specific questions or i help people to express their position in a constellation in a certain way it's not for example if they say oh you're always that far away from me and i really hate that um i can say okay can you say i want you to be closer because that's that's the need that's underneath so you really help people to express mm -hmm. their needs instead of blaming somebody or, or or accusing somebody um so it really gives you also gives the people that work with the constellation a new way of mm -hmm. communicating and they connect with this intuitive layer and that helps in the constellation but it also helps later on when they when they continue with their business is that they have have learned or at least experienced a little bit what it is to not only uh, use the information from the surface current but also from the undercurrents of the intuitive layer so when to use constellations well i could say always of course but it's not always um, especially when you have a complex problems with lots of stakeholders and lots of relationships and, and interdependencies, um, it's very easy to put them in a constellation and immediately you see how what is related to what. Uh, but also with repeating problems. If the problem keeps repeating, mostly it's a systemic problem. So you need to look deeper than only at the surface. You can use it for strategy development. What kind of future do we want what kind of uh, different scenarios do we have and what what are the results of that what kind of products do we need to offer what kind of packaging what kind of um, distribution channels what kind of marketing channels should we use team development very powerful you can have a team just be a you can do a constellation of a team everybody representing themselves so you really have the, 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 the people in the team standing there in the room uh, in a constellation related to each other. So it gives a lot of information about the dynamics in the team and where the uh, solutions are to the issues that they, that they face. Mm -hmm. Leadership development. So yeah, how can I become a leader? How can I lead also with the systemic information and the systemic point of view? And then personal development. And you can see the lower we get here on, on, on this list is the more it becomes more family oriented. Because sometimes I cannot be a leader because of something that happened to my father or happened to my grandfather in the war, for example. So, um, yeah. we we And that's also why I think that we also have family constellations in the business. But it just depends on who you are with and what your contract is with the with the people oh. and mediation i'm um, oh, sorry excuse me. Yes. excuse me i can i ask a question sure go ahead um, when you the first topic on this slide you said when there is complex or repeating problems there is usually a systemic mm -hmm. um systemic uh, uh, problem did you mean in a systemic uh by systemic, did you mean in a family system of a client or maybe in systemic principles of this working system, like uh, wholeness, uh, belonging, or uh, order, or um, um, balance of exchange? What did you mean by that? Uh, both. 
okay. Yeah, because but it's good that you mentioned that. Sometimes the systemic problem, what I mean is systemic is that it is in the, I always say there's in the undercurrent, there's something. Okay. Yes, under, under, underneath the radar. <laughs> underneath the radar. And that could be something having to do with the family that the people come from. And it's very good to realize that, that also this family system is influencing the way we do business. But it is also, the business also has a system, has a history, also has to, wants to include everything. So there could also be systemic issues within the business system. So that's also something you need to find out. So what, what is it? Where do we need to dive deeper into? Is it the business world or do we need to dive deeper into the family? Uh, family? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah? Okay. Thank you. So what makes a good facilitator? And well, if you, as you can see, I see it as a dance. Um, and first of all, it's about connection. It's connection with yourself, with your whole body, with your energy, with uh, all parts of yourself. So also with your shadow side. It's connected with your ancestral field, with your parents, grandparents, great grandparents, and so forth. Um, it's also connecting with Earth, with the universe, and with the field, the constellation field. Um, so I really always take time to, to do this for myself, to connect. And it's with the meditation. This is also what we learn in the, in the, in the training, is how to do this. And also to be aware, because we do this, and then we start facilitating, and suddenly, well, I'm not connected anymore. And, I, and when you're not connected, it's very difficult to facilitate. And a good facilitator also lets go of everything. And that's very complex, especially in business constellations where people pay you uh, to solve a problem. And then you say, okay, I have no goal. I don't want to fix anything. Um, so there's also no judgment. There's no good nor bad. Uh, and you, what we call, you go to the empty center. We also explore that more in the training. What is the empty center? How to get there? Um, and you embrace the not knowing. For me, in a constellation, there's always a moment that I go like, I don't know. And then I know, okay, that's good. <laughs> if I don't know, then I'm in the right place. Um, which also means that you might want to need to endure suffering, pain, tension, um, and this also has to do with your own family background. So for me, for example, I'm really, I like harmony. I want things to be harmonious. That's something that I learned as a child. When there was disharmony, I really got stressed. Um, so whenever in a constellation there is disharmony and there is tension, my first reaction is to do an intervention to create more harmony again. But that's not always the right intervention. So I've learned to endure this a disharmony and a dumb constellation work to really deal with that issue. Um, so now I can sense, okay, I really feel the tension. And beyond that, I can feel it's not, it's not a time yet to do an intervention. So I endure this tension. And then when I really sense that there is, we need to do something, then I do the intervention. So that's, well, that's also the, the art of, of, facilitating is that you you know when to do and when not to do you are also the space holder together with the group but you are the head of space holding um which also means again no judgment but it also means that you take the lead uh, and it could be energetically but also sometimes it's like giving a structure um telling people when to talk when not to talk what is allowed in the constellation and not for you. Uh, it's also putting the boundaries when somebody is crossing a boundary saying, no, we don't go there. Please stop here. So um, that's also an important role for a facilitator. And for me, and that's the way I was educated by Ninka in 2008, is also use your intuitive channels, your intuitive skills. And that's not your gut feeling. Um, I'll explain that more in, 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 in the training. Your intuition is the, the clear seeing, clear knowing, feeling, hearing, smelling, and tasting. Um, and if you have that clear, then you get all kinds of signals and information that you can use in the constellation. And that uh, 
then your interventions come from this this intuitive layer instead of your personal system or your personal um, anxieties or fears. <clears throat> um, yeah, well, I, I hesitate a bit with this new constellation way, but we have seen a development in facilitating where I said in the beginning, it's more directive and people are, yeah, it's like a more structured way. And now it's more uh, intuitive facilitation. And I would like to share something about that because that's also what I really like doing. You surrender to the field. So it's not, you, it's not up to you to decide what to do, but it's more the field being the energy, being your intuition, being um, what you sense that is uh, igniting the, the, the interventions and it's not you. So it is less control and less taking the lead, but well, less control and taking the lead. Well, you can read it in different ways, but it's, it's it, you don't have, a, yeah. So you do take the lead in a way, but in a, in a way you also follow. So there's a lot of silence and spontaneous movements. I always say you can move whenever you want in a constellation. So in my constellations, people uh, move whenever they feel that they move because that way I can instantly see what's the, the reaction of the system to a certain intervention or to a certain movement by the client. This also means that I don't always understand what is happening and nor neither does the client. So, and especially in business constellations, this might be a little bit tricky because they do want to understand. So. In the beginning, I always try to get freedom to do things that people might not understand. And you use your intuitive guidance and knowledge. So in the end, it's a process and it's a chaos <laughs> at the same time. And this is also where the non-duality comes in. And that's really what I see in Constellation. We go to this layer where there is no, no duality. So it is a process and a chaos at the same time. And can you can you embrace that? Uh, so you lead the constellation and you follow. Can you do that at the same time? It's about following your intuition and about knowledge. It's also good. I would say you read a lot of books because all this information will be in your system, but then intuitively it will come to you whenever you need it. And it's about knowing and not knowing. It's about, oh, yes, I know. Oh, no, I don't. Oh, yes, now I know. Oh, I thought I knew, but I don't. So it's it's really this, this balancing between these polarities. Um, and especially also with business constellations, it's a tool because you help people to solve problems with it. And it's a ritual. It has something sacred to, to it. Um, and it's good to have both both polarities there. So I sometimes make it very practical. And like I said in the beginning, it's like a five, six, six step process. And it's a ritual. It's, it's something special. So I have people look each other in the eye, connect on a deeper level and, and use their bodies to get the information from the field. Um, and by embracing both polarities, um, I think you make it complete. All right, any questions about this? It's not uh, maybe a question, but uh, my just my my observation, my comment about myself is that once uh, I step into the the process of a constellation, then it's maybe for me easier. But the whole preparation is something that is maybe issue for me to make a good interview, to make a great decision or best possible decision about the positions and to maybe this what you said last uh, to surrender to have trust in and to uh, to dance between polarities um, and now what I what I heard is polarities like I know I don't know I lead I surrender and I I have structure or I just being spontaneous and intuitive yeah. it's like this is maybe something for me <laughs> that i i need to work on like 
it's just so comment yes, about yes. Ah. Uh, how I understand it. Yes, thank you, because that's what I meant. It's it's because first when we learn it, we think, okay, just now I know how to do it. And then you oh, I don't know how to do it. But so it's, it's <laughs> you know and you don't. And and at the same time. At the same time, yeah. So <laughs> it's very interesting to allow this not knowing, um, but but stay present. Because mm -hmm. sometimes when we don't know, we go like, oh, help, help. But no, we need to stay present, be connected with the field. And then, hmm, I don't know, but I do get an image of these two being closer together. Or I get a word. Well, oh, okay, maybe I need to introduce a new representative with this word. So mm -hmm. then you follow follow the, or the, the, the insights that you intuitively get. Yeah. Well, Thank you. <laughs> what I would like to do with you is to do a constellation with you. Um, and therefore, you will need like four or five pieces of paper. So maybe you can get some pieces of paper because we're going to do that in, in your rooms. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so please get a piece of paper. Or it's actually three to make it. Okay. Listen. And it's a way, this is also a way I, I, I do constellations with a group. It's, it's not that I work with a question, but I have a constellation format where I think that everybody can benefit from. Um, and in this constellation format, what we're going to do, we're going to explore how you relate to business constellations and how your clients relate to business constellations. This might help you to find out, is business constellation something for me or not? Um, and is it something for my clients or how does, how, yeah, how is this, um, how do, how do, how does it, how do they, uh, relate to it, but also how, what happens in the undercurrent between these two, uh, be, between these elements. So you have three pieces of paper and I put a little arrow on it. So you know what way it is facing, because if we work with other other things than than people i always like to bring it back to people so these could be three people standing in the room and they're facing the direction of the arrow and then on one you you write your name or me or i or in your language whatever and on another one you write business constellations just plain business constellations and on the other one you write my clients Okay. or my company clients and you might want to add potential clients depending do you want to explore how your current clients look at business constellations or do you want to explore how potential clients look at it and then you might want to take a little bit of time to breathe out and to slow down a bit and to feel your feet on the ground. Take a deep breath. Maybe also connect with your company. Connect with the earth, connect with yourself, connect with the universe. And connect with the intention to explore this field of business constellations, your clients and yourself. And then you take one piece of paper one by one and you place them in the room. In the order, you can decide on the order, but do it one by one. Otherwise, you have like the three energies in, in, in your hand. So you take one piece of paper and you sense where does this belong? Where does this want to be? So by asking these questions, it's not where do you want it to be, but where does this representative want to be? That's it. That's actually what you're asking. And then you just follow your body and put it down in a direction that it is facing. So also make good, make sure that you have, you know, which way it is facing. And then you do this also for the other two.
And then you step on the piece of paper representing you. I always begin and end with you. So you step on the piece of paper representing you. And you sense how is it first, how, how, what do you sense here? How is your body, your emotions, your energy? Is there tension? And then you sense, how do I relate to the other two elements? And just imagine two people standing there, facing the direction that they are facing. And you sense, okay, how do I relate to business constellations? What happens if I connect there? And what kind of connection is this? And the same for clients or potential clients. And always breathe in and breathe out because when we sense tension, sometimes we stop breathing. So it's good to, to keep on breathing. And it's all just information. And there's information that you understand. And again, there's also a lot of information that you don't understand, but it's there. And you might also feel that if is there a movement in your body, do you want to move? And then you move yourself, but including the, the piece of paper that representing you. So you might want to move somewhere and move the piece of paper with you. And this is already an intervention. This, this, this already changes the field with you and your potential clients and business constellations. And then I would like you to step off this piece of paper. So when you use papers, I always like you to really step off and then step on a new one and step on the on the consulate, on the clients. So that way now you're step actually in the in the shoes of your clients, potential clients. And again, first sense how is it in your body now and how is it different from when you were standing on your own piece of paper? And this is all information about your clients. This is a little bit of a marketing constellation because you can already get the information of your clients related to business constellation. So there might be thoughts, there might be some sensations, there might be a movement. And how do you relate to the other two? How do you relate to yourself? And how do you relate to business constellations? And do you feel a movement? Do you feel that your body wants to be somewhere else than it, where it is now? And then just follow that movement. And again, sense how this is different, how the relationship with the other two is different. And I see some people closing their eyes and sometimes it's good to close your eyes to sense, but before you know it, you're in a different constellation. You're in a constellation in your head. So when you are in a constellation, I always ask representatives to open their eyes. And by opening your eyes, you can also see, oh, okay, how do I relate to this or that? Or maybe your eyes are, are pulled towards something else. And then you step off this piece of paper. And for now, we're not going to explore the business constellation because I would just want, us, want, us, want, want you to experience you and your clients relating to business constellations. So finish by stepping on your own piece of paper. So that way it's easier to, to land in your own energy again, in your own body. But it's also good to realize, okay, how do I relate now? Because maybe the client has moved. And just sense if you step on your own piece of paper.
how it is now and how do you relate to business constellations from this position and how do you relate to your potential clients relating to business constellations? And again, you might get a lot of clear information and it might be very fuzzy and just some sensation and everything is okay. Your system will process this information and you will get just what you need in order for, yeah, for now. And yeah, I know that you don't, you didn't have a specific question. I just created this constellation for you, but it might give you some information. Yeah, so when you're finished, you step off the piece of paper, you might want to, Keep them there, and after the after the webinar, you um, finish, and you also step on the constellations. But you can also just take the pieces of paper, say thank you, and then um, put them away. And if there is anything you would like to share, ask, then this is the moment. And if you're watching the replay, you can send me an email with questions or if you want to share something. Anybody here who wants to share something? Uh, I would like to share because it was uh, interesting. Yeah, very small indeed exercise, but extremely powerful. And uh, because I found out about myself that uh, I was at attracted to business constellation, but turning my back to the clients uh, almost. Uh, but interesting flow that business constellation gave, gives me the power to turn to the clients and to attract the clients to me uh, while business constellations stay as a fuel. Mm, behind you. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Anybody else? Yeah, for me, it was um, really significant that at first, um, in my shoes, I thought, okay, I'm alone here. So I'm alone. It's scary. Uh, me, like me against the client's expectations, client's needs. They're very needy. They, they need me. And I'm alone, but then I realized, no, I'm not alone. I have my business constellations mm. as a resource, as a tool. Together, we're stronger, and somehow it is not. There's not fear in me, and I can uh, relax. I can surrender to the possibilities that maybe I can do this kind of work because I feel um, with resources. I I have resources. Mm. It's great. Thank you very much. Cool. Thank you. Okay. One more, and then we finish mm -hmm. it. Yes, Juana. Yeah, I had um. I had my back to. I was facing away from my clients and potential clients <laughs> and business constellations, which I thought it's like, what's going on here? <laughs> So I turned around <laughs> to see what was going on. Um, and my clients felt happy. Um, I wondered whether... Oh, I, my questions were, um, is this the direction I still want to go in with mm -hmm. what I have been doing? Um which has been a lot of one-on-one -on -one clients online, sometimes in person, but mainly online. And there have been lots of elements of um, facilitating people around their business um, and their systems. Um, so I saw that, uh, that that has been a contribution. Um, the, the potential clients were sort of looking at my current clients Oh. Um, so I'm wondering, is there something that they're interested in? Is there some success there that mm -hmm. they that that they're looking at? Um, if you've got any insight, and then I turned around again. I was like, ah, oh, this, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I I wonder, Martin. My question is, I, I lead a big education project in New Zealand, um, 
with a lot of schools across New Zealand and that has been education has been a big part of my life um but I'm looking for something else I'm bored with it (laughs) um and hence my training in family constellations um which has just you know really broadened my awareness um and I'm like similar to it. I'm very intuitive around I like intuitive ways of working that feels delicious to me mm-hmm. mm. okay so I've got a few questions beyond today thank you yes well so, sometimes you get answers very sometimes insightful. you get questions yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay thank you. thank you for sharing um What I would like to do is the last part of this webinar is to share a bit about the trainings that I give so that you can feel sense if this is what you need, what you want. Um, The in-person training is five days. Well, actually, I'm already changing it to four days and one online module. Um, But basically, the idea is uh, that you learn the first basics of constellation work, group dynamics, then you're really going to dive in and and get, learn about the systemic interventions, how to work with people, how to work with tabletop constellations, and what kind of dynamics do you see in organizations. Then there is a day of going in within. What is your inner stance? How does your intuition work? The empty sensor. How do you use your sensing skills? And then you get the hang of it. You're going to work with how do you work with teams? We're going to work with parallel processes, strategies, fixed formats all kinds of consolation work. That's where we really start working more. And then um, you're gonna broaden your horizon. So where can we apply it? How do you sell it? Uh, we're gonna work with a real client. And when we do this online, you also learn how to, how to apply this online. Um, and as you can see, there, I do give demos where you can learn from. There is theory that you can learn from. And a large part of what we do is practicing and then getting feedback and learn from the practicing. So that's how my 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 training is structured. Um, yeah, this was Lachesar Africano from Bulgaria. Um, and he said, yeah, I, I feel skilled to embed the constellation in my training and coaching practice. And before he didn't even have any training in constellation work. So after these five days or four days in one online, you can really already do constellation work. Um, so you're able to con- to facilitate constellations in a business context, but you've also improved your intuition and have looked at your own systems, being your family system, but also your business system. So you can also improve your own uh, business by doing this training. Yeah, this is also what Anita said from uh, Hungary, that she really got much more than she expected. So um, it's spreading into our whole life. Um, so that's, that's also what happens people. It's, it's really a journey. And I sometimes forget about that because I just do and follow the flow with the people, but it's a really intense process in these four or five days. Um, uh, and, and you get the skills to facilitate, but you get much more. Yeah. I think what makes this training unique is that you do a lot of practicing, um, because in some trainers, they say in the fifth day or maybe after 10 days, you are allowed to do the first constellation. Well, I think go the first day, just go ahead. You learn the intuitive approach more. So how, how, how do you work with your intuition and how do you use that in facilitating? I do adjust the training a bit to the needs of the people. So if you say, I would like to do more in in mediation or more in large companies, or I would like to have more silent constellations, that's also what I I, I do adjust the training. And again, polarities, it's light and deep. It's fun and business focused, but also, um, yeah, so there's, there's all kinds of aspects, but it's not like a heavy training where we do all kinds of heavy work. And at the same time, we do go deep when necessary. Because also in in business constellations, I've seen some deep traumas coming up and and, and deep uh, emotions because, yeah, business is is all about people. So this is Pierre from from France. And he said also, yeah, training that's 
suited to the corporate environment, but still human and soulful. And that's what I like about how how about how he explained what he found in my in my training. Um, yes. So what are the possibilities? In February, I start the online basic training. It's a five module training in which you learn the basics of business constellations. Um, it's meant for people that have not done any training yet. And at the same time, I get a lot of people that already have done family constellations and they really like that they learn new ways of working and a new approach what, 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 which I bring and that they learn how to apply it in a business context. Then there is the hybrid training in, in Cyprus, hybrid in a way that we have four days on Cyprus and one module online. Um, and I have planned one in Bucharest uh, in Romania. So, um, oh, there's no extra bonus for the first 10 people that sign up. That was something else. But I can create a bonus. I will create a bonus. That's that's good. Um, and you, for every training, you get the recording of the works of Discover the Power of Business Constellations, which really helps you to also understand constellations a little bit more. Um, and for the Dutch people, there is a deepening course. And I'm also thinking of creating a deepening course online. If you're interested in that, let me know. Um, but this is a, a, an in-person training in the Netherlands for the Dutch. It's also in Dutch. So. Well, if you want to know, Anything about what I do, intuition-in-business.com slash events, and you get an overview of all the activities. And I do have a global attendance service. So everybody pays 5% to this kind of fund, quote unquote. Uh, and people that are from countries that are, don't have a lot of money or have a situation that they cannot afford it, um, please contact me because then I have a way of maybe paying in installments or maybe get a little bit of a discount or maybe get a big discount depending on what well, your intuition, my intuition and, and what is needed. Um, and I offer the trainings in different time zones depending on um, the participants. So the next one is really, it's gonna be in the mornings, our mornings. So it's it's, it's focused on Asia and, um, and, and uh, Australia and New Zealand. Okay. So go to my website and sign up for the um, free intuition tools to boost your business. Um, yeah, any questions about that? But can I just check? So are you not doing the full five days online? You actually have to come in person for that yes. other than your yeah. um yeah. your um start your basic one. yeah i have the five module which is a base the basic training um because That's i online. think that if you want to go deeper then you really yeah. need to be together yeah 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 i agree okay thank you charu i hope think that you like it thank you this is yes. wonderful okay great um if you have any questions, send me an email. We can also make a Zoom call to find out if this is really the training for you or something else. Or maybe you say, well, why don't you come to New Zealand to give a training here? Uh, there are all kinds of opportunities and possibilities. So um, I like to explore an adventure in the world. So let me know. Um, thank you for now. Have a great day, great evening, great night. And hope to see you at one of my trainings. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.